Now time for the seven things you'll be talking about today. Number seven. These stories are sad, but I actually love them. Uh, Rebecca Myrick, 60, from Elkmont, Alabama, has been charged with manslaughter under a new state law after allegedly distributing fentanyl uh, that led to the overdose of 54-year-old Lawrence Ward Light. The law passed in April allows manslaughter charges to be used against anyone who knowingly distributes fentanyl, resulting in another person's death. Limestone County Sheriff Joshua McLaughlin uh, emphasized the rising danger of fentanyl in the community and vowed to pursue cases where lives are lost due to the drug. I love this. I'm a full supporter of this kind of stuff. We should spread it for all types of drugs and things like that. If you're out there dealing poison to people and and it's killing them, uh, you should deal with the consequences of such things. I love this. I love seeing this. I fully support this. I want more of these types of laws. I'm a big fan uh, of putting these drug dealers in jail. Uh, Let's do it. Let's do it. Number six. Uh, Alabama's 34-0 win over Missouri, led by a strong defensive effort, and Kayla DeBoer dressed rather snazzily. Uh, They have uh, three interceptions, uh, which led them on their way. Uh, The confidence is up uh, for Alabama. It's got to be. And radio legend Paul Feinbaum is calling the upcoming game a playoff eliminator with LSU. That's coming up on November 9th. Meanwhile, Auburn broke its SEC drought with a 24-10 victory over Kentucky, uh, where Warquez Hunter rushed for 278 yards, energizing fans as the Tigers aim uh, to carry this momentum forward in the season. And then they can say War Eagle, because that's confusing. Uh, UAB's Trent Dilfer still employed, though. Congratulations to him. Uh, There's someone calling this the, quote, worst coaching hire in the last decade at the University of Alabama at, at Birmingham. But the rest of the state seems to be doing better. Number five. Governor Kay Ivey announced uh, the deployment of an additional 125 Alabama National Guard soldiers uh, to the U.S. and Mexico border uh, to support customs and border protection, bringing Alabama's current deployment to nearly 500 soldiers. Now, Uh, The Alabama troops from the 152nd Military Police Company in Hartzell will serve a 400-day mission uh, focused on border security. Uh, Ivy and other Alabama, excuse me, Ivy and other Alabama leaders, including United States Senator Katie Britt, a Republican out of Montgomery, and Representative Robert Adderholt uh, from Haleyville, uh, criticized the Biden administration's border policies with Ivy pledging uh, Alabama's continued support for securing the border. That's good. You're seeing some other uh, governors sending troops to the border as well. Michigan, Michigan sent some as well. So this is good stuff. Uh, Put more people on the border trying to stop what's going on there. We need a much bigger presence, but yeah, this is good stuff. Good. Number four. There was another debate of some kind in the Alabama 2nd Congressional District. Democrat Shamari figures leading by about 4.6 points over Republican Caroline Dobson in a race that seems to be growing closer Uh, The two candidates debated a couple of different things. Tax policies. Um, One wants less taxes. The other wants more taxes and spending. Uh, Dobson favors permanent tax cuts for businesses uh, and figures advocates for a balanced approach that considers both business benefits and practical policy impacts. That's a quote, by the way. I don't know what that means, but yeah, okay. Uh, I don't like practical policy impacts or business benefits. I, I... Thank you for for laying this out for me. Uh, Dobson attacked figures uh, over his $1.5 million Washington, D.C. home, suggesting it shows he's out of touch with typical voters and and that he lives out of the district, which I don't know if that's a compelling argument to anyone. Number three. In a surprising and rather hilarious move, uh, the Washington Post and the L.A. Times have decided not to endorse a candidate for the upcoming a presidential election and their newspapers which are so fair and unbiased are now witnessing a couple of things happening one their readers who are definitely not chasing confirmation bias at all times are giving up their subscriptions and canceling them. their employees who are also out there trying their best to do what now oh uh, just 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 put out the news for you oh they're all quitting too because the paper's not taking a position, which is hilarious. Uh, the former Washington Post editor 
Uh, Marty Barrett says this is a dereliction of duty motivated by fear and retribution uh, of Donald Trump. So they think Donald Trump's going to win, so they don't want to endorse his opponent. Okay, cool. Number two. At a packed, star-studded Madison Square Garden rally, former President Donald Trump asked this question. He said, this election is a choice between whether we'll have four more years of gross incompetence and failure or whether we'll be the these will begin the greatest years of our history uh, of our country. Okay, that, that was the statement. Now, it's also a Nazi rally, apparently, uh, according to his opponents, who have complained about rhetoric for years, rhetoric for years, have ramped up criticism from figures like Vice President Kamala Harris and others who suggest uh, that this is all fascism, uh, that Trump loves Hitler so much, uh, and suggests that this uh, normal political event was somehow a 1939 pro-Nazi rally uh, being held at the same venue. Uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, I guess the one sane Democrat in the country, was like, hey guys, why don't you chill out and stop doing this? And they're like, boo, you're a fascist too! You should go to jail! Boo, boo! Now, time for the number one thing you'll be talking about today. So why are they doing all of this? It's not because they're scared. Okay, just make sure we all understand this. This has nothing to do with the fact that Democrats are scared that they're going to lose. That has nothing to do with it. That's that, Look, they're just running around calling people Nazis because that's what they want to do. And as the election nears, reports might suggest that there are growing doubts uh, within Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign. And yes, top Democrats might be worried about her chances against former President Donald Trump, and maybe they're coping, and that's why they're calling everyone Nazis, and that could also have something to do with why they're assigning blame and for a loss that hasn't happened yet. So they're already starting to assign blame. Concerns are centering on Harris's perceived struggles because she's a brain-dead moron. That's my interpretation, but they're not saying it that way. Uh, they're saying that she has problems articulating her platform. We're just kind of saying the same thing, aren't we? Uh, They're also suggesting that the distancing between her and President Biden may be causing some problems as well. Uh, By the way, this is what they also blame Al Gore losing in 2000 on because they didn't use Bill Clinton during the campaign. I mean, Bill Clinton was, uh, you know, too busy. Well, you know what Bill Clinton was doing at the time, but he was busy and he couldn't be bothered to get out there on the trail because he was out there chasing chasing tail that's probably what he was actually doing it didn't want to be bothered but now we are looking at a situation where they're going to start blaming joe biden which i love i I like that at the end of this they're gonna be like it's joe biden's fault he's 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 the one who did this it's his fault uh his low approval ratings and his campaign involvement or lack thereof is causing some tensions In, in swing states republicans appear optimistic while democrats worry about lagging momentum and the impact uh, of the race on lower ticket uh, races, the impact of Harris on lower ticket races. Uh, so there's a, a big issue going on right now uh, amongst Democrats. They're scared. That's why you're getting all of this. And you know what? I find it to be absolutely beautiful, and I love every single thing about it. I love it. I, I love it. I want to see more of this. I can't wait uh, to see more of this. Now, if you want to hear uh, about what's going on at this Nazi, I, I'm sorry, the Trump rally in, in, in Madison Square Garden, Uh, John Wall will be on the program with us a little bit later today. We'll talk with him uh, about that. He's going to talk with us about this uh, event, so stay tuned uh, there. He is the head of the Alabama Republican Party. Also, I didn't mention this in the seven things, but uh, there was a shooting down in Mobile, or excuse me, Baldwin County at the GOP headquarters down there, bullet through the window. No one's talking about it. We'll talk about that with John Wall a little later today as well. Keep your radio locked right here. If you'd like to weigh in, of course, you can do so. All very simple. Talk or text. You can get that in uh, right here anytime. You can talk or text 205 545. No, that's not right. 866 494 WVNN. That's 866 494 9866. That's the scoutpestcontrol.com WVNN hot take text line. Talk or text. Uh, get yours in. Can someone tell me what was funny about the Puerto Rico joke? Can anyone tell me what it is? Like, I, I'm just interested to know what's funny about that joke. I, I, I'm. I'm not the, that's not funny person. That's Emily on the show. But I'm just dying to know what was funny about the Puerto Rico joke. Just tell me. I'm just, I'm interested to know. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned. 
Get WVNN's Dale Jackson's 7 Things You Should Be Talking About Today right in your email box every morning. Go to yellowhammernews.com and sign up today.